the average net worth of a homeowner was almost $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars. Hey everyone, Kevin A. Malsh, Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. Hey, you found us here on Facebook, you found us here on YouTube, please hit subscribe, hit like. We're trying to build a community here so we can help more real estate investors just like you. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the age old debate. Do you buy or do you rent? Rent versus buy. You know, if you look back through history on a monthly basis, your monthly payment basis, it's typically been a little bit cheaper to buy than to rent. Meaning if you're looking at similar type houses or a condo to an apartment, similar products, in general, over time, it's been slightly lower principal interest taxes and insurance payment than your monthly rent payment. Now that does change. And once the crash hit in 2008, up until about two years ago, it's been pretty even. And then within the last couple of years, what we've seen is it's actually now a ch little cheaper on a monthly basis to rent than to buy. And the big reason for that, I believe, is because of the crazy appreciation and home values that we've seen. Even really low interest rates, we're starting to see those monthly payments creep up above what you would get if you were renting. So I guess if you're looking at specifically just a monthly outflow on just your payment, I would say it's probably better to rent right now, but I don't know if that's really accurate because it's missing a lot of other advantages to both renting and buying that we should be considering. So what are some of the advantages of renting a home versus buying? Well, one, we talked about the lower monthly payment, but there's also other advantages like a lower down payment. In fact, there is no down payment, right? You might have a security deposit and maybe a first month's rent or something like that, but it's definitely not a three and a half, five, 10 or even 20% down payment like could be required if you were buying a home. So it's cheaper that way, but it's also cheaper with monthly expenses as far as maintenance goes. Now, if you're renting an apartment, there's really probably no maintenance and you have your landlords paying the HOA or if you're renting an apartment, there is no HOA. If you're living in a home, you might have some maintenance for like yard maintenance or something like that, but you're certainly not fixing water heaters and faucets that break and appliances that might go out. So you can just call your landlord and they'll come and fix all that stuff. So that definitely is a huge advantage to renting. Uh, but what about your lifestyle? You know, a lot of people don't want to be tied down right now. They want to be able to move around, be more mobile. So if you're renting, you're not tied down. So you could actually move you know, every year if you want to, or even sometimes more than that. So that's definitely a big advantage to renting. But what about advantages of home ownership, you guys? And this is gonna be big for you realtors and maybe your lenders out there when you have some clients that are on the fence if renting or buying, especially in this market that we're in now, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But what are some of the advantages to owning a home? Well, we talk about lifestyle for renting and how that could be advantage. What about the lifestyle of home ownership? What about being able to do your garden in your yard or change something in the house, remodel or make it your own? You can't do that when it's living in somebody else's property. The other advantages are really financial, you guys. You have your tax benefits of home ownership. You're writing off your interest and your taxes that you're paying on the property. What about the appreciation, which again, we'll talk about in just a minute, but I think we're gonna see some good appreciation over the next couple of years. Obviously, we cannot guarantee or count on appreciation, but over time, we should be able to expect some level of appreciation with home ownership. And then what about paying down your mortgage? So if we're looking at specifically a monthly payment, rent versus buying, it might be a little bit cheaper right now to rent but you're not getting any value for that. It's all going to your landlord's pocket. If you own a home, some of that goes into interest, so it goes into your lender's pocket, but some of that goes into your own pocket in the form of principal reduction. You're actually paying off the loan as you go. So that's a big benefit of home ownership. Now they say the country's wealth, 99% of it, is held by individuals or citizens that own homes. So to put this in perspective for you, in 2019, the Census Bureau says the average net worth of a renter was about $5,700. Now look, $5,700 in net worth. Net worth, again, is your assets minus your liabilities and whatever's left over, that's how much you're worth. So a $5,700 net worth disappears in a month or even less if you lose your job or go on furlough or something like that. That's hardly even a rainy day fund. Right, so that's the average net worth of a renter in 2019. Now, in 2019, the average net worth of a homeowner 
was almost $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars on average. Now, this could be skewed because really wealthy people own homes, right? But I mean, these numbers don't lie, you guys. The richest people and the wealthy people in this country are homeowners. So that should be argument enough for most people to consider homeownership. Now, I'm not saying that homeownership is right for everybody because of some of the advantages to renting but it is pretty clear. I mean, the numbers are pretty clear and they are what they are. So Kevin, that's what, that, that's what I'm gonna get asked, right? What about the crash that's coming? You know, we talk about that a lot on this channel and I'd love to hear some comments what you guys think about this below, but what about this foreclosure crisis that's gonna be coming up when all these forbearance agreements start to expire? Well, I don't think that's coming and there's two reasons. The first, which I've talked about quite a bit, is government intervention. There's just too darn much government intervention. They are absolutely, they being the government, absolutely committed to preventing a foreclosure tsunami, right? They're committed to it. They're pumping money into helping these people that are falling behind on their mortgage payments that are owing into forbearance agreements, you know, with the stimulus plans and the eviction and foreclosure moratoriums and all of this stuff. And they're also directing the servicers to help people as they come out of forbearance to prevent the foreclosure. So things like payment plans and modifications of the loans, even to the extent of moving all of the payments that you've missed over the last year to the end of the loan, you want to pay that all right now. You all get rolled into the loan. Your monthly payment won't change. You just basically pick right back up where you left off a year of no payments. Happy birthday. There you go. That's what the loan servicers are being directed to do. So I think that's going to prevent the foreclosures that some of us are expecting or hoping for. The other one is equity. Look, in 2008, when the foreclosures came and the financial crisis came and the crash came, you know, there was no equity in homes. People were actually over leveraged. Right now, 3% of all homes are underwater, meaning the property is worth less than what's owed against it. 3%. Another fun statistic is of all the properties that are in forbearance agreements, 77% of those have more than 20% in equity. I can't even imagine that those 77% end up in foreclosure because it's just too much equity to sell the property in more traditional ways, listing it with a realtor, putting on the MLS, getting the profit out, and so they could become a rental or buy something a little bit more affordable at that time. So I think those are big numbers. I think those are telling numbers. I don't think the crash is coming. I think that we're gonna see more years of appreciation. I don't know how much, I can't promise anything, but I think we do have some runway here. So if you're a realtor, if you're a lender, or if you're looking for yourself to buy versus rent, I would say this is probably a decent time to go ahead and buy because of what the numbers are or what they are. Um, and I will say this as well. All that statistics that I read on the Census Bureau that I just gave you is based on, you know, basically owning one property. Landlords with one or two or three properties, you know, your mom and pop landlords do even better. Wealth is made in real estate, guys. Invest in real estate. Let us know if we could help you. Check us out at pinefinancialgroup.com.